it's uh, it's it's still morning here in Idaho, but good afternoon to those of you on the East Coast. And and let me start by um, recognizing our veterans. It's Veterans Day, so just want to thank everybody. If there's anyone uh, on the call today that's a veteran, we appreciate everything that you did for our country, and, and certainly a shout out to uh, Husky Nation and all our veterans. You know, today's a unique uh, a unique opportunity. It's a unique situation. It's an exciting day. Uh, Pat did not uh, mention we're going to have a formal press conference uh, when when coach officially takes over the reins as our head coach uh, on November 28th or 29th. We'll get it, more information out to you about that. Today, we really wanted to visit with you, obviously uh, introduce coach. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know him, uh, whether whether it's uh, personally or, or indirectly as watching him uh, throughout his career. But you know, the, the things that impress me most, most about Coach Mora uh, during the time that we've spent together, uh, both on Zooms and in person, um, he, he, he is uh, the epitome of a servant leader. Um, he cares deeply about student athletes and their success, both on and off the field. Um, and he is an intense competitor. Um, th those things uh, with all the people that I talk to, um, th those are those are things that everyone is uh, consistently providing feedback on. So uh, we we are extremely excited. I, I, I think um, it's a it's a rare opportunity for a place like UConn uh, with the challenge that we have in front of us to attract someone that has the depth and breadth of experience as Coach Mora does, and we think he's going to do great things for our program. So with that, um, Pat, I'll turn it back to you. Yep, thanks, Dave. Uh, Coach Mora, just provide some uh, remarks and then we'll go to questions. Well, first of all, I wanna thank David for uh, the kind introduction. And I also wanna uh, offer, uh, my, pay my respects to, to our military veterans on this day. Um, I'll tell you what, what, what a tremendous honor to be chosen to be the next head coach at UConn. It's something that uh, means so much to me and it's such a wonderful opportunity. Uh, as David mentioned, we've gotten a chance to know each other very well over the course of the last month uh, through Zoom calls and then over the last four days in person. Uh, I've had a chance to talk to many people in, uh, in the UConn nation and uh, it's just been overwhelming to feel the support and the passion and the commitment to the program and uh, the desire to see this program become prominent again. And uh, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a heavy task, but it's one that I, that I welcome and I'm excited about taking on. I'm excited to get back to, to stores and begin to develop relationships um, with people in that area, whether it be members of the community, high school coaches, of course, our student athletes, other people on the campus. This is an opportunity for me to go to a nationally known brand. I mean, everybody knows UConn. Across the country, we know UConn. And, uh, you know, primarily because of the success of the basketball programs and the baseball programs and field hockey and other sports. But uh, I feel that we can, we can do some things in football that, that bring, us, bring us up to a level where people are proud of that program. And uh, the first thing that they're not always asked about UConn is tell us about basketball. You know, we're looking forward to the time when they say, hey, you know, tell us about that football team. They're doing some really good things. So I'm just tremendously honored for this opportunity to, to serve our players, uh, to serve the state, to serve the university. And uh, I really can't wait to get going. So uh, just, just a great opportunity. All right, thank you. We'll uh, go into questions now. Uh, Dom Amore, Hartford Current, go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning, Jim. Uh, I guess I wanna ask you, given the places that you've been and the things that you've accomplished in football, what attracted you to this challenge? What, what made this an appealing challenge for you? And it, obviously, as you alluded, it will be a challenge. Well, thanks, Dom. Yeah, it, it, listen, I recognize the challenge and I relish the challenge. I'm a competitor. I love to compete and um, I love a, a hard challenge. There's a saying that I really like, and that's hard things are hard. And uh, 
I, I just think this is an amazing opportunity. You know, when the job came open, I expressed my interest. I have, I have a burning desire to coach again for many, many reasons. I love being on the sidelines. I love the competitive aspect of recruiting and the game. I love the strategic part. Maybe more than anything, though, I love the relationships with the players. You know, I love, uh, I love beginning a relationship with a, with a family and a, and a young man at an early age and helping them get to where they want to be in life. And typically, these young men come to a, a school like UConn with desires to go on and play in the NFL. And I've certainly been able to have some success in, in helping young men get to that point. But I think I'm equally as proud of the fact that um, that the student athletes that I was able to coach at UCLA, they graduated um, and they were prepared for life after football. They were prepared for success after football. And so when you marry what I think is really important with the values of, of UConn, I think they're absolutely in sync. I mean, this is a, a nationally prominent brand. Um, there's a, a desire for, for uh, athletic excellence. And yet there's also a desire for ac athletic excellence. And so there's a tremendous balance right there. Uh, as I got into discussions with David and we got deeper into this thing, you know, my juices just really started to flow and it became something that I was very, very passionate about. And, uh, you know, I know the facilities are there. Great. I know there's a, a fertile recruiting grounds around that area. And it, it just is an opportunity for, for me to do what I love at a place that I'm really growing to love. You know, David afforded me the opportunity to talk to about 11 different people at the government level, um, at the university, um, some of our you know, most ardent supporters, and, and to a T, everyone expressed the exact same sentiment about UConn and UConn football. And that was one of pride and one of support. And so for somebody like me, uh, I, I gravitate to that. So. Uh, I just, I'll tell you what, Dom, I couldn't be more excited. And then just follow up one, Jim. I, you know, I know obviously you've worked with Lou uh, in the past. I believe you've worked with Noel in the past as well. Um, do you anticipate some continuity with the coaching staff? And what, you know, what, what have you seen from watching UConn in terms of the, the level of talent that they have? Well, I've watched some games on TV and I've watched some, some games on film. And I don't think it's always easy to get a great feel uh, in those situations. I'm looking forward to the next three weeks where I can, I can do some evaluations of our players, of, of our staff, uh, of our program in general, uh, you know, get a feel in person for the level of talent. I, I'll tell you this, what I've seen, you know, when I've watched games on television is a team that's, you know, going through a really difficult transition and yet they're continuing to fight for each other, continuing to play hard, continuing to demonstrate uh, effort, and a good attitude. And I think those are things that we can absolutely build on with regards to the coaching staff. Um, you know, Dave and I have had extensive discussions about this. And once again, we're going to evaluate everything and, you know, naming me early gives us a chance to be very deliberate in how we move forward with, with filling our staff. And we want to fill our staff with men of integrity, um, men that are dynamic, uh, that, that the players trust, that they gravitate towards, that are great recruiters. Um, I'm a father of four. And um, we're, gonna, we're gonna hire people to our staff that, uh, that parents are going to feel comfortable sending their, their sons to, because I wanna make sure that I create an environment there for our players uh, that's, that is similar to where I would want my kids to be. And that's very important. Unqua with Fox 61. Go ahead. Thank you, Pat. Uh, Jim, good morning. When you look at the challenges in front of UConn, what do you think is step number one in, in terms of returning the program to FBS prominence? Well, I think we have to, we have to make incremental gains every single day. You know, we cannot waste a moment in our pursuit of, uh, regaining respect and becoming competitive. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a perpetual journey. And uh, I think we have to find ways to measure our success outside of the scoreboard initially, initially. Uh, I think this thing you'll find about me as we go on is that I'm, I'm very competitive, very passionate and uh, don't really relent a whole lot. Uh, 
but I think that it's all about building and maintaining and cultivating the right culture, the right environment, um, where every day, everybody in that building is fully committed, fully committed to doing the things that we need to do to gain ground every single day and take steps towards our objective. And uh, I think that as we go through time, that objective will change. The vision will change, the vision will grow. But uh, the philosophy of attacking every day with a passion to be better, that's never going to change. Jim, thanks. Thank you. Matt John Visky, go ahead. Jim, welcome. Uh, you kind of touched on part of my question, which was the vision that you have for the program, but also what's the foundation, the staple of a Jim Moore football program? Oh, that's a great question, Matt. You know, I, I would like to think this. Um, a team that, that plays with great discipline, that plays with great toughness, that uh, plays with a passion that, that jumps out at people, whether you're watching at home on television or you're in the stadium, you say those are men that are passionate about this game. They love playing for each other. They love playing for the name on the front of their jersey more than the name on the back of their jersey. They care about each other. They do things right. Uh, they play with just elite effort at all times. Um, they don't make silly mistakes. And uh, no matter what, no matter what the situation is, they're always going to compete their hearts out. And, uh, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, I, I want I want people to be proud of our football team. You know, I want our fans to be proud of the product that they see on the field. I want them to be proud of the young men that are representing them and the coaches that are representing them. And I think that that sometimes can go beyond wins and losses. You can win the, the wrong way and you can sometimes struggle a little bit the right way. But as long as we're showing hope and as long as people are proud of the direction we're moving in, as long as we are making strides towards being a team that's competitive and becoming bowl eligible and, and playing at a championship level, then, then that's what I want people to see. Gavin Keefe, New London Day, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Welcome. What did you think you learned in your last job at UCLA that will help you into this job? Well, Gavin, I think that uh, we need about three days to, for me to answer that question. But I think that I learned a, a little bit of patience um, and the ability to move deliberately without ever sacrificing a sense of urgency. You know, I think you can be patient and you can move deliberately, but that doesn't mean your your uh, your standards are are being compromised, and that doesn't mean you're moving slowly. Uh, we're going to move with urgency every single day, but we're going to make great decisions for our program every single day as well. I would say that in the past, um, there were times when when I would move swiftly. Uh, and urgently, but maybe not as deliberately as I should. And I think that that's one of the great lessons I learned along with many others. And, uh, you know, I really am just excited that to, to get an opportunity to, to come back to college football and, uh, and put, you know, what I, what I would characterize as my experience and my uh, passion and, and intelligence for the game you know, back into action for these young men and, and for the state of, of Connecticut. And, and obviously this program faces a lot of challenges. What, what did you see that and it makes you, you know, want to take the job and that know you can turn the program around when some others have, have, have not been able to do that? Well, I, I'm going to tell you this, Gavin, it, it started with David Benedict. And uh, as I got to know him better, and we, we spent a tremendous amount of time together, uh, both on Zoom calls and in the last four days in person. And his, his personality, his commitment, um, the support that I feel from him, our ability to take these last four days and really spend time getting on the same page with what we want this program to look at and how we're going to attack this task has made a huge, huge impact on me. And the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, talking to people uh, in the community uh, and, and that are important to, to UConn football and listening to what they have to say and their passion for this program, I'll tell you what, it reached in and it grabbed me. And it, it convinced me beyond 
beyond any doubt that this is the right place for me and this is the right time. And that, uh, that, uh, that there's just no hesitation about just diving in head first and, and, and going like heck. Thank you. Justin with News 12, go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking my question, uh, Coach. Um, in short, how do you plan on um, attracting in-state recruits? Well, Justin, I think we have to win in Connecticut. And uh, if there's a if there's a, a really good football player in Connecticut, then he needs to he need he needs to become a Husky. And I think the most important thing we can do initially is make our presence felt in a very, very profound way in the state of Connecticut. And that means, you know, getting out and developing relationships with the high school coaches, uh, with people in the communities that uh, support the high schools, um, so that we're always first in on the good players. And, and then we need to build a program that's attractive to the good players in that state. And then we need to put a fence around that state and make sure that every single good football player in the state of Connecticut has a burning desire to be a Husky. And uh, that doesn't just mean going out and, and talking to the high school coaches that have prospects this year. That means going out and developing relationships with all of these men so that they have a trust in, in us as a staff and us as a, as a program where they say, this is where I want my players to go play because they're going to be developed, they're going to be taken care of, they're going to be pushed and pulled and loved, and at the end of the day, they're going to experience success. And that's the message that we're going to send to the high school players and the high school coaches and the families in the state of Connecticut. Thanks, Coach. News 12 wishes you the best of luck. Well, thank you. Eric Dobratz with WTNH. Go ahead. Hi, Coach. Welcome. Hey, uh, question for you. This is a fan base that's been through a lot of ups and downs, more downs recently. Do you have a plan yet? I guess it's maybe something that you'll have to formulate, but of, of kind of reconnecting with a fan base that is desperate to win and, and get back in the Rensselaer field and support the Huskies. Well, from, from a, a personal standpoint, I'm going to be out in that community and, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to try to, to, to let them see for real the passion that I have for UConn and, and, and UConn football in the state of Connecticut and, and our fan base. And I understand they've been through a lot and it's up to us to give them hope. And it's us, up to us to put a, put a team on the field. Like I've said several times already in this, in this meeting that they're proud of, that they want to come in and watch and support. Um, and they say, you know, it's Saturday. What do you want to do? I want to go to the UConn game, game dad, you know, a kid saying that I want to go watch, watch my team play. Um, you know, who, who are they playing? doesn't matter who they're playing. I want to watch my team play. And, you know, there's a process to that, but I think it's important that, that I, that I demonstrate on a daily basis, how excited I am about being the head football coach at UConn. And I'll do that. And I think that uh, people will start to see that and they'll start to feel it. And then they'll come to some practices and they'll see how we're doing some things and they'll, listen to some press conferences and hear the words that our players and the messages our players are giving and our coaches are giving. And then they'll come to that stadium and, and uh, they're going to see a product. They say, you know what? We like what we're seeing. We're going to come back for more. It's exciting. They're disciplined. They play with energy. They play with passion. They represent us in this state. Well, and, and if we do that and we win, the people, people will start filling that stadium back up and they'll come to the games and they'll have pride in their program. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Mike with UConn Sports Network. Go ahead. Hey, Jim. Welcome aboard. A uh, couple of quick things. Uh, first off, you've been in television the last three years. What did you <laughs> learn about football, NFL, college, whatever, from afar that you think you could put into, into play now as you get back into coaching? Uh, that's, a, that's a great, great question, Mike. So, Kind of stepping away from the role of a head coach for a while and yet staying involved in the game as an analyst gave me a great opportunity to kind of see things from a different perspective. It gave me an opportunity to watch more football than maybe I've ever watched in my life. You know, I would, I would sit in the ESPN studios and I'd have 12 games on at once 
and hit every single time slot through the day until those games were over. So I got to watch trends. I got to evaluate situations that, that coaches were making decisions in. I got to watch schemes. Uh, I got to evaluate coaches. You had opportunities to go on the road and, uh, and, and in person watch team, other teams practice and pick up, you know, hey, that's interesting what they did there. That's something that we can incorporate the next time we get a chance. And so I thought it was a really positive experience for me. Some people go, wow, you, you've been away from the game. And I said, no, I, I haven't been away from the game. I've just been viewing the game from a different lens. And I think it's going to be a real benefit. And just to follow up, when you went to UCLA, your college job there, they were kind of flailing around a little bit. You had four really good years to start, four bowl games. What did you do to get it going in the right direction so quickly there? Well, you know, there was some talent there. Uh, it was just about coming in with a certain type of energy and passion and uh, and and setting a standard of excellence that everybody was expected to live up to and creating a culture of peer to peer accountability amongst the players and really just an energy. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, it was recruiting like heck. It was getting great coaches on the staff that, that cared about the players that, uh, that were passionate about being great, that wanted to go out and recruit. Um, it was about creating a mindset and a culture that everybody believed in where everybody was all in and, and fully committed and it worked. And, you know, we had good players and those players believed in what we were asking them to do. And they did it with, with a hundred percent effort all the time. And it, and it paid off in, in wins. And uh, I'm excited about, you know, attacking this the same way. All right, coach. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Gabby with NBC Connecticut. Go ahead. Thanks, Pat. Hi, Jim. I'm actually going to give you a breather, and I have a question for Dave. Oh, so. good. Thanks, Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So, Dave, I'm just looking to get a little bit of a peek behind the curtain of, of what you can share with us about the coaching search, how you ended up ultimately connecting with Jim, and then really how you pitched the job to him. Give us give us an insight. Yeah, no, I appreciate the question. You know, I'm not going to, I'll probably talk more about the process when we actually have the, the formal press conference, but you know, there were, there was a lot of interest uh, in the opportunity. We did a lot of visits. Uh, one of the things that I said from the outset is that we've got a lot of time, so let's use it uh, wisely. And, you know, that there's no doubt that we were able to spend uh, quite a, quite a amount of time talking to a lot of different uh, people that had interests. But in the end, um, you know, I, I would say that there was no one more, um, I, I, I guess, uh, committed or enthusiastic or showed more interest than Coach Mora did throughout the whole time that we had been speaking. Um, you know, I can't say specifically exactly how um, or who gave me his contact information, but someone did bring his name up to me and said, hey, uh, this is what this program needs, which at the point in time, I, I certainly was well aware of who Coach Mora was, but he, he wasn't necessarily on my short list of candidates. Um, but it, it became very uh, clear to me as we began to have conversations, um, the type of person he is, the, the, the great uh, experiences he's had uh, along the way, um, not just as a, a, as a head coach, but also an assistant coach. Um, he grew up uh, in the life, so to speak. He's been and traveled uh, all around the country uh, during his youth, as well as during his professional career. And, and so um, with, with all of that uh, in place and, and his demonstration of significant interest uh, in our program, I, I thought it made sense for us to get together. And, and I would tell you that, you know, th this was not the typical recruiting pitch. This was not, hey, we want you, um, you know, come to UConn, it's your job. You know, as, as I, I, I think I said to someone else, I was brutally honest about um, what I think the, the opportunity is, but also the, the challenge. And it, it's really important to me that the person that was going to ultimately take on this, this challenge and become our head coach was fully committed, was fully aware, 
and was fully prepared uh, to take this on. And uh, having spent, um, you know, we're, we're probably up over 50 hours now uh, in, in total time that, that we've spent together, which is, um, I, I would tell you, it's a much better way to interview someone, uh, to get to know people um, in, in the way that we have over the last several days. And it, it only gives me more confidence uh, in that we've got the right guy to lead this program. And um, he, he is fully aware. There, there, there's always gonna be surprises uh, as a new person to a campus uh, when you haven't been working there. But I, I would tell you, he's gonna be coming in uh, eyes wide open and, and ready to go. And they say it takes 70 hours to make a new friend. So you guys still have a little bit of time to go. Um, <laughs> if does, I, that, does that include a, a, make a friend or an enemy? I, I told him, I said, one of the results of this may, you, you just may get so sick of me that you kick me out of your house. But uh, that hasn't happened yet. To hear, if I can just follow that up really quickly. Um, one of the things that has stood out so far hearing from Jim is um, it, the passion about making sure that you start with Connecticut. Um, how was that a part of your conversations? And um, is that something you also emphasized with him or is that, you know, his his instincts to bring that to the table? Well, I, I think, you know, there, there's, um, it's it's not new to recruiting or the profession or coaches that, that you have to protect your state. You know, everyone talks about building a border or building a fence around your state. And, and so we haven't necessarily totally talked just about Connecticut. We've talked about recruiting as a whole because there is without question, um, you know, recruiting has got to be a top priority for us to be successful. You know, you've got to have a great staff, uh, but you, you have to have uh, great, great competitors. And coaches talked about what he's looking for uh, in, in people that, that play for him uh, and that are going to play for UConn. But the state is critically important. Um, I, I think it sends a message. If you're not good in your state and you're not developing relationships in your state, then I, I think that that, uh, you know, probably is consistent throughout your, your recruiting um, and the mentality and the philosophy that you have. So I know that our high school coaches, because I've met with some of them, are very anxious to be engaged in the way that, that I believe Coach Mora will and the expectations that he'll have of his staff and the relationships that, uh, that they will create throughout the state. Thank you. All right, Matt Shonvisky, do you have another one? I do. Uh, Coach, I, I, was, I can't help but notice the, the uh, Mark Pattison jersey on your wall. I did see the Seven Summit story. What did that teach you about perseverance and um, overcoming challenges? And do you see parallels to the job you're walking into here at UConn? Well, you never reach your summit. You know, everybody has a summit. And it's, you know, I worked with a guy named Jim Finks. And Jim's in, the, he's deceased now, may he rest in peace, but he, uh, he's a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And Jim used to have this saying, he said, does the, ro does the road wind uphill? Yes, to the very end. And so, uh, you know, your journey never ends. It's constantly learning, constantly having to overcome obstacles, constantly learning how to handle success, constantly trying to be a better man, a better person, a better husband, a better father, a better coach, a better mentor. Um, and that's, to me, kind of what Mark's journey was as it relates to me. You know, you, you go through things in your life that, uh, that are challenging, but you keep a, a great attitude, you stay positive, you figure out ways over, around, or through those adversities, and uh, you just keep you just keep walking uphill, man. Roger Cleveland with the Waterbury Republican American. Go ahead. Hi, Coach. I, I guess the, the first question is what do you what are your views about an independent schedule and how can that help you recruit? Well, I think there's a real positive there and that, you know, David and I, and, and David to this point, obviously, and he's always going to take the lead, but he, you know, he's been able to create a schedule that is, I, I think is attractive to prospective student athletes and that they look at a schedule and they say, okay, well, you know, this week we're playing at Clemson and next year we're playing at Michigan in the big house. We're playing North Carolina state and we're playing Syracuse. And we're playing some of these nationally known brands and, we're going out west and playing Utah State, and uh, you know, I think that's that's something that's attractive to student athletes. I'm not so sure, and, and 
I'm not saying I'm right or wrong here, but I don't know how important it is to a prospective recruit that you're in a conference. I think what becomes important to the student, the prospective student athlete, the recruit and their families is, are they going to a school that's gonna have balance academically and athletically? Um, am I gonna be pushed to become the best that I can become in a, in a positive environment? Um, am I gonna get an education and graduate and have uh, a path to success beyond what happens on the football field? Not necessarily am I in this conference or that conference, but I will tell you this, if David decides that the best way forward for this school is to join a conference, then that's going to be great as well. So I'm just fully in support of whatever, you know, David thinks is best for this program. And UConn has never really had the ability to recruit above like a three-star level. Do you figure just your contacts or your presence can change that? Or do you see something about the university that says, you know, I can open eyes and recruits to this and that'll bring in the four stars and build from there? You know, you know, I, I, I think we all pay attention to the star system. Um, and it's a way that we can judge recruiting classes, certainly, because it's, you know, it's objective. Well, I think it's objective, but uh, I think what's most important is the evaluation that you put on a player as a coach, you know, as an expert, as somebody that's done this for years and years and years um, and has a background in, in not only recruiting players, but developing players. And Sometimes, and I think if you look at the, the NFL draft and you look at, at the NFL in particular, there's a whole lot of what were perceived as three-star athletes playing on teams around the league and having great success. So certainly the star system is uh, something that opens your eyes to potential recruits, but it's your own evaluation that matters the most. And do they fit into your program, in your vision of your program? And um, you know, I worked with... Um, with a, a really great one in, in Bill Walsh uh, back in San Francisco. And the question he always asked when we were going through the draft process is, is this somebody you can see standing on the podium with us when we lift the Lombardi trophy? Now, I think that's important, an important question to ask. And that is from a whole lot of different angles, whether it be their character, their personality, their football character, their ability, all those things. So those are all the things that we'll evaluate beyond just are they a three or a four star? We, we get a three star, then we're gonna develop them into what a five star would look like. That's that's our objective. Thank you. Thanks. Noam with UCTV, go ahead. Hey coach, I, uh, I work for the student television station on campus and you talked about UConn being well known for basketball. And I don't think a lot of students at UConn um, are really that engaged in the football program. What are some of the tenets of your program that you think will be enticing to students and make them you know, make the drive from stores East Hartford to come to football games every Saturday in the fall? Well, I can't wait to get on campus and start meeting some of those students. I can't wait to get into the dorms and walk into the cafeteria and go into the fraternity and sororities and, and kind of start to get a feel for what the student athletes, are, or, I'm sorry, the students are all about and letting them know what, what I'm all about and what this program is gonna be all about. I understand the uh, the challenges of having a stadium that's not on campus, but you know that was the same thing we had at UCLA. You know we were shoot we were well over an hour away from the Rose Bowl where we played, and it was a challenge sometimes to get students there. But I can tell you this: if the 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 kids on campus get excited about their football team because they're able to engage with the players in the classroom, on campus, they're able to come to practice, they see a team that plays hard, plays for them as students, uh, wins games, they'll make that trip. And not only we make that trip, we gotta get them into the stadium from the parking lot. And, uh, and we're gonna do that and we're gonna find ways. And like I said, I, you know, I, I'm gonna be in stores and I'm gonna be in that community and I'm gonna be around that, that student body and, uh, and they're gonna feel it. They're going to feel it. And it, I understand it's a challenge, but uh, it's one I'm really excited about taking on. Wayne Thanks, Norman coach. with the UConn Sports Network, hopefully driving carefully. Go ahead. 
Hi, Jim. Good to see you. I'm driving right now, so I hope you can follow this. But uh, I've had a couple of conversations with Randy Epsil about the change in the game from the first time he was here to the second time. It was much, of a, much more of a running offense and the use of a fullback when he was here the first time. And now it's more of a passing game, more of a wide open game. Has there been, I know it's been a shorter time period, but has there been a change in the game of football since you last coached? No. It, well, I mean, I think football changes every year. Uh, you know, we're always, as coaches, we're always studying and trying to learn a better way to do things and, and uh, a quicker way to score points. Most important thing you can do is take the athletes on your football team and put them in a position to have success and keep them out of positions where they're going to fail. And, uh, yeah, I think there's been changes, but, uh, you know, we were pretty wide open offense at UCLA. I think if you were able to look back at some of our statistics and successes we had on offense, you'd see that we went fast. We spread the field, we threw the ball well, we ran the ball well, we had some balance in the things we did. And I think those are the keys no matter what system you're in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hire a great offensive coordinator that's uh, progressive in his thought process, um, is not stubborn in the way that he, that he approaches the game and is you know, intent on putting our players in the best position to have success and score points. All right, if there are no other questions, I think we'll wrap up. Anybody else? All right. Uh, hey, I want to thank, thank everybody for uh, joining today. I look forward to meeting you in person and uh, getting started here. Well, we've already started. So, but I appreciate your time this morning or this afternoon for you. Go Huskies. Thank yeah. you guys.